All right, hello all you crazy people out there. This is Dragonite Spam, and welcome back to making tower defense games in Game Maker Studio. I think I finally called it the same thing two, two uh, weeks in a row. Anyway, so uh, right now there's a game, and uh, you have towers that are beautiful red squares. You have enemies that are beautiful red squares. I think I called. I think I just called this blue. Um, you have waves, and the enemies can die, and if they get to the end, you will game over and stuff. And uh, it's pretty nice. It actually works like a game. Uh, this part. Right now, today, this week, whatever, I'm going to uh, be extending this a little bit. First, I'm going to be uh, going and actually drawing the enemy's HP over their heads. So I'm going to say in the draw event, uh, one, draw self, because uh, we want ourselves to show up on the screen. And two, draw text. I'm going to be doing this. All right, so uh, X, Y minus 20, so a little bit over their heads, and their current HP... Uh, slash the max HP and they don't actually have a variable called max HP uh, so right now I'm going to go and define that and I'm going to say uh, I guess max HP equals 8 and then HP equals max HP just uh, so that I can just define it once if you want to change this or whatever I can uh, I just have to change one number not two and I think this is actually going to be off center because the, uh, the text alignment is set to uh, left but I don't really care about what it looks like right now and we're just gonna be wow all right okay so I'm gonna want to make it a little bit higher than a minus 20 pixels but okay uh, you can see that they have their HP uh, I'm gonna make this a minus 32 I guess sounds like a good number next let's see in the controller where we spawn enemies I think I said I was gonna do this a long time ago but this is going to go into its uh, its own script and I'm going to say spawn enemy and I could do this a few ways I could say uh, I could pass it some parameters to define what kind of enemy I want to give it I want to uh, make or I could just let it decide because it's being called by the controller object anyway uh, which I think I'm going to do even though uh, the other option would be pretty good uh, would be better really for showing off how like un uh, function uh, arguments parameter lists work uh, so right now, what did I call that again? Spawn enemy. Spawn enemy. And let's see, this is going to go and uh, let's unindent that. And I'm going to say, right now, to uh, to very simply set their HP, I'm going to give a, uh, I'm going to make the amount of HP they have dependent on the wave number. And actually, you know what? I will go and um, pass this an argument. That's I'm going to give it the wave. And let's see over here. I'm going to do this. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with my uh, my general uh, manual of style, void means it just doesn't return anything. Uh, sort of stealing this concept from Java. And this, in case you're not familiar with this, uh, if you lead off a script with triple slashes, uh, if you go over here, I think I have to close that again and restart it. But if you go over here, you see down at the bottom, it'll uh, it'll show up a little line of help so that you can remember what arguments to uh, to give it. So that's pretty nice. That's, an, uh, that's a little trick that Game Maker has. I'm going to say uh, var wave equals. I'm just going to say var w. I like to make my temporary variables uh, single letters if I can get away with it. It's going to equal argument zero. So that's going to be uh, getting the value from this in here, the value that you give it. And now I'm going to say e dot max hp equals. How about 8 plus w? Uh, so they're going to get one more HP every wave now. Let's make it 8 plus uh, 4 times W so that they get 4 more HP every wave so that the, so that the difficulty goes up a little bit faster. And we're going to say E dot um, HP equals E dot max HP so that uh, that change is reflected. All right, that should be a good start. Let's see, you're going to, uh, you're going to start. I'm going to just speed up the video a little bit so that uh, I'm just going to cut away to the next wave so that you can see... Uh, how this changes without having to sit here for a while. All right. And now this is a uh, wave two. They have 16 HP, and uh, they're actually getting pretty close to getting through uh, this barrage of bolts over here, which is uh, pretty nice. The difficulty is going up. I like that. Uh, how fast you want the difficulty to go up is uh, up to you. You can make it like quadratic. You can make it like squared. Uh, so some base number plus four times wave times wave or whatever. Uh, you can make it as complicated or as simple as you want. I think I'm going to stay with this. I might make it a little bit less steep. I might make the difficulty a little bit less steep. But considering that eventually I want to implement the towers themselves getting stronger too, 
Yeah, I'll leave that for uh, later. Let's see, next, speaking of towers, um, I suppose it's time to uh, start to give them a little bit of attention. Let's see, normally, uh, you are not able to, in fact, click as many times as you want and spawn as many towers as you want. In a tower defense game, there is some sort of a, like in-game currency that you have to uh, use to get towers. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to assign a variable to the towers and it's going to be cost. Yeah, why not? Uh, so cost is going to be, how about, uh, let's make this basic one, give it a value of 10. I'm going to go into the controller, and the same way I'm defining lives, uh, we're going to say uh, currency equals 50. 10 goes into 55 times, so we will in initially be able to uh, spawn five towers. Um, let's see, next in the controller, uh, before we create one, we want to check if uh, currency is greater than or equal to uh, tower tower dot cost. Uh, we're going to do this. Actually, this isn't a good idea because uh, the first time you do this, there will be no towers to get the variable cost from, and it'll tell us that uh, something went wrong and it's going to crash. So I'm going to need to do something else with this. All right. Um, for now, I'm just going to say uh, cost. I'm going to take this out of the individual tower object and put this in, uh, in here. This is not going to be the final system that I'm going to be using. Uh, naturally, you're going to want your different types of towers to cost different values. I'm probably going to be creating another array where um, the different tower types are sorted in the array and uh, you pull all your values from there. Probably even things like the range and attack power and whatever. Uh, so let's see, that is controller.create uh, next controller got left pressed. If this happens, uh, we're going to create a tower and we're also going to say uh, currency minus equals cost so that we can't spawn them forever. And lastly, before I run the game, I'm going to just draw another thing on the screen and that's going to be this and the value is going to be this. Okay, wonderful. Let's go and run this going to compile itself, I'm going to go stick, wow, I just wasted like a lot of currency, didn't I, just, uh, okay, that wasn't where I meant to put them, but just clicking randomly doesn't seem to work, um, this is going to get uh, progressively more difficult, eventually they're going to start breaking through and I'm going to game over, uh, so I don't really think I need to show that, um, I can't create any more towers because I have zero currency, and let's see, next, uh, you're going to probably want a way to replenish that, and the standard way of doing that is when an enemy dies, they give you um, some currency. And let's see, when, okay, so collision with bullet, if HP is less than or equal to zero, you're going to, uh, going to delete yourself, and the game, the controller's currency is going to could say it plus equals one, plus equals five, whatever. Um, once again, typically you want this to scale with how strong the enemy is. So I suppose uh, a very basic way of doing that would be to to uh, have it based on how much HP you have. I think I'm going to do something uh, somewhat arbitrary, and I'm going to say the amount of uh, money you get from killing something is going to equal uh, its max HP divided by four. So. In the first round, you're going to get two uh, two units of money. I'm just going to call them dollars, screw it. Uh, you get two dollars from killing an enemy. The second round, you're going to get three. Uh, the third round, you're going to get four, and so on. Uh, let's run this. And hopefully this is going to do exactly what I want it to. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with my placement this time. And uh, so the corners are typically the, best, the better positions for uh, placing your towers in these games. And indeed, I'm getting a two. It's going up by two every enemy I kill in the first round, and uh, <clears throat> second round starts, it's going to go up by three, which is nice, uh, they're starting to go a little bit further, and I'm probably going to want to start creating a couple more towers soon. Uh, Alright, enough of that, this is, uh, yeah, I'm getting currency faster than I'm needing to build towers, so that's a little bit unbalanced, but balance is an issue I'll, I'll tackle later. I just want something that works right now. To be honest, I probably should have done this currency thing back in the last video when I dealt with um, like lives and stuff that you can lose when you uh, when you let enemies through. But let's see. All right, first because this is driving me insane, I'm going to just go and center the HP 
uh, text above their head. So this is going to set the alignment of the wow. Uh, this is going to set the alignment of the text, and it's going to make it centered. Like if you were to open up Microsoft Word, you're going to hit centered on the text alignment. And here, uh, this text, this is a uh, the alignment is globally set. So I'm going to have to say left to make this uh, left aligned. And um, this is going to look a little bit neater than it did before. I'm just going to uh, run the game and uh, watch it happen. Come on, spawn. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, text is centered now. It doesn't have to drive me up the wall anymore. Next, let's see. I'm going to say, hmm. I have a vague idea of having the towers get stronger themselves with every enemy they kill. Uh, not unlike an RPG, like you get experience from every enemy you kill, whatever. And then, like, at certain points, have them level up, have their stats go up by one, or something of that nature. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to want that system to work. Uh, so, whoever is still watching this, feel free to spat out ideas, throw them out the comments box, and uh, I'll read them, and I'll make something out of it. Please and thank you. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go and uh, draw some, in some more information on the screen, and that is going to be... Uh, the information on the particular towers. I'm going to start with a GUI. So, uh, a real GUI, that is. I'm going to need a way to uh, activate a tower. And say if a tower is activated, it's going to show its information on the side. Let's see. In the controller object, I'm going to go... Let me go and uh, first draw like a rectangle on the side of the screen. Or on the top or the bottom or whatever. Uh, so how about... All right, first I'm going to do this. It's very simple. It's just going to draw a black rectangle over on the on the uh, right side of the screen. And did you do that? Wow, that's, um, that's um, a little bit narrower than I was imagining. All right, 200 sounds like a better value. This is probably going to overlap uh, the track a little bit, and I'm going to want to move the track over. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to worry about that later. This hasn't been the longest video ever, but the next thing that I want to do here is going to take a slightly different turn. Uh, it's going to be dealing with the towers and uh, variations in towers, and that's going to be somewhat different from what I'm doing here. So that's it for this week. As usual, if you're interested in the project file that I'm using here, uh, link in the description. Uh, for now, I hope you all enjoyed that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch some of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.